let me share with you a story. I went to preach for a friend of mine in Nigeria. And um, when I got to his church to preach, very big church, okay, very big church. They brought one of the guys who is uh, one of the most sought after speaker in America. He's an American preacher, very known. If I call his name, all of you know him. And then my friend said to me, I brought this guy from America because I want him to listen to you and see what we've got. So I'm like, he said, no, no, no. It's not competition. If this guy can understand what you preach, he can influence the American church. So I want him to listen to you. So I'm going to make you preach first before he comes. A lot of people's nightmare is to preach after I have preached. <laughs> so, I said, okay, no worries, no issues. I prayed in the green room and I asked the Lord to just give me what to say because there are many things I can say but I want to say the right thing in that service. So we got on into the church and he called me up to preach. And I came up and I started teaching. I started teaching. You know my usual work. Second Timothy 3, you see. <laughs> my normal process. And I went to Luke 24, 25. And the journey was going on and I was building my case. I was building my case. Then I landed in Genesis. Adam never ate anything. There was no eating. Everyone's looking at me. No eating. Then I began to break it down and explain. I didn't know that he came all the way from America to preach that night on the fruit that Adam ate. <laughs> <laughs> and I destroyed the whole fruit eating thing with sound teaching. I saw him sweating. He broke out in sweat. Before the sweat could dry up, they have called him. <laughs> now he has nothing to say. So he comes up to the pulpit and he begins to say, Black lives matter. Black lives matter. After he finished Black lives matter, then he started saying, Bring back our girls. <laughs> I'm so I'm very serious. The message is on YouTube. That particular service is on YouTube. <laughs> then after Rigma rolling with Black Lives Matter, bring back our girls. He now say, Let us pray. <laughs> then we prayed for about 10-15 minutes. He handed over the mic. Then he looked at me at my seat. He said, You are wicked, man. <laughs> and I said, How? He said, We will speak in the office. So he told my friend that he wants us to have a chat. That night, Micah Stampley was in that service. He sang. So he followed us to the office. He said, my God, we don't know nothing in America. Can you believe we, we think we have the gospel in America? Sitting down and listening to you. I've never heard any of these things you said tonight. Can we please have a Bible study? So this American preacher too said, look man, I, I, you messed me up. I really right now don't think I know anything. Can we really have the Bible study? So that night, after the service, we sat in that office for three hours doing Bible study. Three good hours. He bought all my books. All of them bought my books. Him and Micah bought everything. In fact, Micah ordered for all the teachings from our office because he says his wife is addicted to what I teach and they follow. So the point I'm making is that, see, when we begin to teach this, it will come to a time where nobody will teach anything else if it is not this. Because the truth prevails. So mightily grew and did what? Let's just be rugged about it. Let's be unapologetic about it. Let's keep pushing it, pushing it. It's growing. It's growing. Trust me, it's growing all over the world. Bless you. Praise God. Yep. Yeah. Good evening, Papa. Evening. Yeah, it's two days ago uh, mentioned to you to explain